It was a crime that put San Diego on edge. An unknown freeway sniper shooting randomly at cars on one of San Diego's busy freeways. She was driving southbound on 163 when all of a sudden, the USD student felt a sharp pain in her side. The 21-year-old had been shot while driving her car. Another man found a bullet hole in his car after driving through the same stretch of freeway. Everyone was thinking, who's next? This crime was completely random. Um, the victims had absolutely no connection to Mr. Dragosits, and it could have happened to anyone that was driving to work or to school that morning. A homeless man, Stephen Dragosits, was later arrested, but at the time, no one knew who or why. With no eyewitnesses, no leads, how did the Highway Patrol investigators narrow it down to Mr. Dragosits? The answer lies with these very small cartridge cases and this very large building, the San Diego Sheriff's Crime Lab. I received a rush case from my supervisor on April 12th, 2011, and was told evidence needed to be analyzed for a DNA analysis. The first break in the case was this set of cartridge cases found when the Highway Patrol shut down the 163 after the shooting. And a line of investigators um, just walked down a, a pretty great length of the freeway searching for any type of evidence that they could find. And fortunately, they found a group, two groupings of uh, shell casings. Those were rushed to the crime lab for two reasons. The first was DNA. One of the really important parts of this case was that I had no name. Um, sometimes when I'm given a case, let's say it's a, a homicide, you'll have um, some suspects who are already believed to be uh, involved in the case. And so then in that particular case, I can do a comparison and see if we have a match. In this particular case, all I received was the swabs from the casings. So while San Diegans wondered when the sniper would strike again, Monica Aman got to work. The swab, which was simply a cotton Q-tip that had been brushed against the cartridge cases, was the key to finding any DNA that could identify the shooter. The DNA is in the nucleus of the cell, so it's in the inner chamber inside the cell. So I need to do what a process called extraction. And basically that's taking all the other junk that's in our cells and the dirt and grime, whatever else might be on the evidence, and we're taking that away and I'm just taking the DNA out. Following that, the DNA is quantified, which shows how much of a particular DNA is present in the sample. Then a specific section of that DNA strand that is always used in analysis is amplified or photocopied enough times to be genetically analyzed for the end result, a DNA profile. You do all these steps, you do the extraction, you do the quantitation, you do the amplification, and it's when it comes off the genetic analyzer and you get a profile, it's, it's always a little Christmas day, you know, like, what's, what's it gonna be, what, are, what did I get? Because during this whole process, you're basically dealing with a swab in a tube, and then it's just liquid in a tube. And so you're kind of staring at this tube going, you know, what's in you? And is there a DNA profile in you that's related to this case? In this case, there was. The profile was entered into a database and it got a hit to a man who had been previously arrested for throwing rocks at cars on the same freeway. His name was Stephen Dragositz, and he was still in the area, in his RV. He was arrested, and the RV was seized. He always parked it in this area. He lived in it. This was his home, essentially. So this was just his territory where he felt comfortable, and he never left. And that's where the second role for the crime lab came into play, ballistics. The type of cartridge cases that I received were uh, a 22 long or long rifle. And I was able to look at the firing pin impression, the shape of that, the fact that the firing pin uh, was also used as the ejector for this firearm. While the DNA was being analyzed, ballistics expert Scott Hoops had been looking at the markings on the bullet casings to help investigators find the gun used by Dragosits. Diving into the crime lab's huge reference collection of guns, Hoops conducted test firings to confirm his suspicions. These are two rifles. Uh, it's a, a Winchester Model 190 and Model 290. Uh, and based on the marks that were left on the cartridge cases, out of all of the 1,200 firearms in the reference collection, these are the only two that could have left those marks. Now investigators had their suspect in custody. They had DNA evidence that linked the suspect to the cartridge cases found on the side of the freeway. 
and they knew the type of gun that he probably used when he was shooting at the cars. Now, they needed the gun. He had a lot of, a lot of items within his RV because he lived in there. And so they did an extensive search. They even took it down to the border and put it through a large x-ray machine to see if they could find the gun in one of their many compartments within that RV. Unfortunately, the gun was never located, but they found shell casings inside of the RV. So although investigators came up empty in their search for the weapon itself, the casings that they found in the RV gave Hoops a new line of investigation. He took the shell casings that were found on the side of the freeway the day of the shooting, and he compared those to the shell casings that were found inside Mr. Dragasit's RV. And so now you can see these striated marks that are caused uh, by the firing pin rubbing against the head of the cartridge case are lining up, and you can see quite a few of them lining up almost like barcodes. And that sort of agreement in marks is what allows for the identification of two cartridge cases to the same firearm. When combined with the DNA evidence, the ballistics evidence was enough to prosecute Stephen Dragositz on six counts, including assault with a firearm and shooting at an occupied vehicle. He was convicted on four counts and will spend the rest of his life in prison. Testimony from Monica Aman and Scott Hoops was essential to the case. I've always been fascinated with figuring out who done it and crime. One of my favorite games growing up was Clue. <laughs> it feels like putting together a, a very complicated puzzle where you sometimes don't have all the pieces. Their work was probably the most important work on the case because the issue in this case was identity. We didn't have any eyewitnesses. We only had individuals that had heard the shots being fired. So the only way that we could prove that Mr. Dragositz was the individual who had done the shooting was through this evidence, the physical evidence that we found on scene. With James Ketchkesh in the County News Center, I'm Dominic Fulgoni.